glad you could join us today on Earthfall. Welcome to the program. I'm Ayola Kasim. 2021 to 2022 was a record-setting year of catastrophic disasters, during which over 10,000 human lives were lost and an estimated $280 billion in damages were incurred worldwide. None of these catastrophic disasters needed to be as deadly or as costly as they were. United Nations University Institute for Environment Researchers said, they found out that by applying the right solutions and the right combination with each other, lives can be saved, damage is averted, and in some cases, disaster can be altogether prevented. Lagos floods was one of 10 disasters studied during the period and found to share root causes which connected to other disasters in other cities. We'll look at this today on the program. Do stay with us. <laughs> I am Abeni Balugu, a midwife. As a child like these ones, I knew our house was where the ocean is now. When the surges started, we moved outwards. Before now, it used to be once in five or ten years. But I just know that this is the seventh plot we are occupying. That is for us to move from one place to the other. If it should surge now, we will have to move again. While 81-year-old Mama Abeni blamed the surges that occurred during her youth to population growth, today she blames sand miners for their current predicament. Sand mining now has no limit. About five years ago, they brought rocks to stop the erosion. But the ocean surge has not stopped. In fact, it has washed the rocks away. If you go down the road towards the imam's place, you will see that there is no road again. Before now, the road had three lanes, two for vehicles and one for people and bikes. But now only one lane remains. Now even bikers have to be careful. The ocean surge has washed the rocks and even the sand away. With the sand being washed away, it makes the surges worse. My name is Chief Mam Banusa Shamsidin, the Chief Mam of Alpha Beach. Between like say, three months, two months, you have a coach many houses and stayed us away. Then when you call government that been tell government that this thing is happening, happening here, they start to become and do this stone here, they don't want to take us to help us. But when they stop this stone again, the water starts to become more and more. Then as soon as two months to this time now, June, July, August now, you have sent many buildings away again and wash many buildings away. Then look at where, look at where they stopped the stone. Look now, this is the place they had stopped the stone before. But after they stopped the stone, look the place that they have a coach again. They are still roughly 100 meters again. Today, like many, he believes the erosion has become more frequent because of the groins made to protect the eco Atlantic city. An entire new coastal city being built on Victoria Island, adjacent to Lagos. Initially conceived in 2003 as a solution to environmental hazards arising from the flooding of the Lagos Bar Beach, the Eco Atlantic project has snowballed to play host to one of the most expensive real estate locations in Africa, with a square meter of land now selling for almost $2,000. Across Africa, private developers and governments are backing over 2 billion square meters of land reclamation and new city projects, costing over $514 billion to cater to the continent's growing urban centers, according to Estate Intel's Africa's New Cities 2023 fact sheet. West Africa at 5.5% comes after North Africa, which has 88% of planned new city development on the continent. Nigeria has the highest share with 17.9% of the West African sub-region. But as the eco-Atlantic city and locations closer to it have been protected by groins, communities from Oko Alpha and beyond are constantly destroyed by the surges. 
But you want government to come and help us, to come and do this thing again, to come and start the stone again. Because as it's worrying us here, it's still worrying us as in, in, for our neighbor community again, like Lafia Aji, Okunaja, Mopol. So it's worrying that this water is terrible. Erosion in Okun Afa and other neighboring coastal communities along Leki Ekwe Expressway is not news. Unfortunately, a former president's visit has not solved the problem. Instead, every year, residents have seen large portions of their lands wash away by the ocean. We were warned about this decades and decades ago, that this is one of the symptoms of the effect of climate change. Warming the ocean, the ocean expands, it rises, more heat creates more energy, you have bigger waves, and you're going to have this massive erosion. The ocean is an extremely powerful force and it's ready to break through the barrier that has been there for centuries, which is the beachhead. And once it breaks through that barrier, the consequences on this whole lecky axis would be horrendous. And it would cost, instead of maybe hundreds of millions of dollars to rectify, it could actually cost billions, if not trillions of dollars, if we allow it to continue like this. Conservatively, conservatively, the last four years, we are talking about over 100 meters have been lost. That's even conservatively. In fact, people who were there have been saying even sometimes two kilometers have been lost because we had a lot of coconut trees uh, all over. But the time that we started monitoring just four years ago, we've lost at least 128 meters. And that is just, as I said, conservatively. So what happens is that the mangroves that usually a barrier between the ocean and, and, and the land is that the mangroves the way that nature had made it, if you look at the roots of the mangrove, they are put there to be able to break the current. So the ocean comes just gently onto the land. But once we tampered with the mangroves, and then there's no more protection. So that is why the next line now is the ocean shore is hitting the land and eroding it. And I'm using this opportunity to call on people or communities that still have mangroves in their vicinity. They should protect those mangroves because that is nature's barrier to helping us cushion the effect of the ocean current because the Atlantic Ocean is brutal. So mangrove has been put there to be able to protect us. But once we clear that, we make money so-called by clearing the mangroves, but we'll pay heavily. That's exactly what is happening. Billions of Naira may not be able to save what nature has given us free that we destroyed. It flows. The next place that is flowing into is our beloved expressway. The Nigerian Conservation Foundation has been at the forefront of those campaigning to put an end to the negative impact of the ocean surges on the residents. This has resulted in a visit by the senator representing the area. Let's be louder. Let's help government. Let's do a lot of quantitative analysis. Just, it doesn't have to be exact. I'm saying it doesn't have to be exact. Just have an idea. Just have an idea that we can push to government. And I'm sure that... I will do my part by bringing the attention of um, the federal government to our plight. And it's not peculiar to us, like we said, there are other areas. The, the, the thing is that because we have tampered with the green infrastructure on our coastline, we will continue to have these issues until we have firm intervention. Just like Eco Atlantic City is a firm intervention for saving VI, we need similar intervention to be able to save Lekki Axis. And that's the truth, because that axis has been saved. The next place to be saved is Lekki Axis. And that is why we are calling on everybody who should be involved in this to come and get involved in it and save Lekki Axis. The residents of Lagos are faced with increasingly severe annual flooding of their city, which is threatened by sea level rise and sinking at a rate of up to approximately 87 millimeters per year. Flooding in Lagos results in damage and destruction of critical infrastructure, homes, small businesses, schools, and other public infrastructure at an estimated cost of $22.2 million each year. The ability of this sinking city to cope with flooding is significantly hampered by poorly maintained waterways and drainage systems. The city is rapidly expanding as the population grows and people flock from rural areas towards urban centers in hopes of better economic opportunities. We're seeing increasingly severe and more frequent disasters around us. And so the, the um, urgent need for action on these issues is there. Uh, but I think also people are uh, wondering at times, why aren't we doing more? What can we do? 
And so we need to uh, learn more about these disasters if we're going to address them. And so what this report does really is try to connect the dots between people everywhere and the disasters that we see around us. One of the ways that we link the different uh, disasters is through the things that cause them to happen or contribute to how severe they are. And so uh, Lagos, the flooding in Lagos is of, of great concern. And I think that also uh, there are people in the world that might not realize this is such an issue. So we wanted to shed light on it. In terms of uh, what we thought uh, the, the wider picture of the story of, of the, what's happening in Lagos is uh, coastal cities around the world, it's not just Lagos, other cities as well are under threat due to the same issues. One of those issues being uh, the mining of material and coastline that's degrading the environment in such a way that is increasing risk. Drawing a connection to Tonga, uh, Tonga was more vulnerable to the impact of uh, tsunamis after the volcanic eruption due to the fact that they had also uh, reduced the amount of coastal protection they have by uh, removing um, coastal forests and ecosystems. And we see that happening also in Lagos. So the same issue connects both cases. The United Nations University report, Interconnected Disaster Risk 2021-2022 says, the city faces another deadly threat in the form of a hidden industry, sand mining. Sand mined are the country's shorelines to supply a construction boom in the area leads to eroding coastlines and the destruction of coastal ecosystems, which are critical components in protecting the inhabitant from storms and rising seas. In the past decade alone, 59% of the wetlands in Lagos have been lost, a predicament directly linked to the worsening flood problem in the state, which displaces thousands of people, making it clear that the short-term economic gain of sand mining under lax regulation puts at risk the future of many communities in Lagos. As grand building projects spring up for those that can afford them, the vulnerable people in the state are continually pushed to the margins and into harm's way by development and disasters. Sand mining exposes them further by undermining coastal protection and damaging ecosystems that they rely on for coastal protection and livelihoods like fisheries. The high sea levels is, is definitely part of it. And Lagos sits at a, a low elevation, and also the topography of the the, the area surrounded by water. So uh, rising sea levels definitely uh, um, plays a part. When you have extreme rainfall, also uh, influenced by climate change, the water doesn't have uh, many places to go if the water on all sides is rising. But uh, the water also has fewer places to go because of the way that the drainage systems are maintained and uh, the options that we have for uh, storm water to run off, this can also be improved. The fact that um, Lagos is also such a burgeoning metropolis, a lot of building, a lot of concrete and urbanization is reducing the perme permeability of the ground to be able to take in some of this water. And as we say, uh, as the city expands and we replace natural ecosystems with more concrete, this also plays a role. So all of these factors are uh, when the heavy rain comes, giving the water nowhere to go. The hidden industry of sand mining will become an even bigger threat to Lagos residents in the future. It has been predicted. By 2050, climate change increasing precipitation rates and the risks of subsequent flooding will be twice as high as today and sea level rise will result in half of the city at risk of being underwater by 2100, and many people in vulnerable areas at risk of permanent displacement. Today, people living in coastal communities along Lekki Ekwe Expressway are living on a hope and a prayer. They are hoping that just like a lasting solution was found for Amadabela Way in Victoria Island, something will be done to save their communities while praying that the economic situation will not be a barrier to achieving their desired results.
the first ever global data platform on sand and other sediment extraction in the marine environment finds that the marine dredging industry is digging up 6 billion tons per year, the equivalent of more than 1 million dump trucks per day. This is significantly impacting biodiversity and coastal communities worldwide. The new data platform, Marine Sand Watch, tracks and monitors dredging activities of sand, clay, silt, gravel and rock in the world's marine environment, including hotspots like the North Sea, Southeast Asia and the east coast of the United States. Developed by Grid Geneva, a center for analytics within the United Nations Environment Program, the platform uses automatic identification system signals from vessels and artificial intelligence to identify the operations of dredging vessels. The new platform provides information on areas used for sand extraction, areas of capital and maintenance dredging, sand trading ports and hubs, number of vessels and operators, and extraction of sediment and other types of activities by countries with exclusive economic zones. Humans are moving or extracting 4 to 8 billion tons of sediment per year from the marine environment. That's the result of our platform. And 6 billion tons on average, so is the equivalent of a wall of 10 meter high by 10 meter wide all around planet Earth every year, or 2 kilogram per day per person for the 8 billion humans we are, or more than 1 million trucks per day. Um, so this gives you an idea what is 6 billion tons, because it's so big. The Marine Sand Watch cannot yet detect artisanal and very small scale mining along very shallow coastlines despite its intensity in some regions. When it's taken out of dynamic environment, like if you take it from beaches or from rivers, or now we're talking about the marine environment, sand plays a dynamic role. It's part of the ecosystem. And that's why it is um, very important to be very careful when we take sand from those dynamic settings. So look at this uh, boat. It looks like a giant vacuum cleaner, and that's what it does. It's basically sterilizing the bottom of the sea by extracting sand and crunching all the mineral uh, microorganisms that are feeding fishes, so it has impact on biodiversity and fisheries. The Marine Sand Watch estimates that between 4 and 8 billion tons of sand and other sediments are dredged every year in the marine and coastal environment. Furthermore, Data analysis for the years between 2012 and 2019 shows the scale of dredging is growing. It says we are approaching the natural replenishment rate of 10 to 16 billion tons per year, which is needed by the world's rivers to maintain coastal and marine ecosystem structure and function. This is especially concerning for regions where dredging is more intense and extraction already substantially surpasses the sediment budget from land to sea. Yes, it's not sustainable. The, or amount, the amount of sand that we are withdrawing from the environment is considerable and has large impact. So like we've done for other natural resources like timber, we have cut more forests than trees are reproducing themselves. The same with fishes, we are overfishing and taking more fish than they reproduce themselves. Imagine that sand is produced by very slow geological timescale uh, erosion from glaciers, rivers and waves and it takes a lot of time to transform rocks into sand and we are withdrawing 50 billion as a whole in the terrestrial environment and 4 to 8 billion from the marine environment. The world has been living with easy to access sand resources. Consequently, sand is being used faster than it can be replenished by natural geological processes in some locations while damages to ecosystems is occurring in others. As the global urban population will increase to represent over 68% of the world population by 2050, and as cities expand and urban infrastructure is upgraded, demand for sand will only increase. Uh, now the impact on the, on the fishes are, are tremendous. They are the fact that you are removing all the the bottom of the sea and it's changing, there is no more life there. The life needs to come back, so you need to allow time to come back. If you don't take all the sand, uh, if you leave like 50, 60 centimeters of sand, life can co come back. But if you are taking all the sand to the bare rock, then you, it's a different status and the life may not recover. Shallow sea mining for sand and gravel is central to various construction activities. 
It poses a threat to coastal communities in the face of rising sea levels and storms, as marine sand will be needed to build coastal defenses and support offshore energy infrastructure such as wind or waves turbines. Sand extraction puts coastal and seabed ecosystems at risk, including marine biodiversity affected by water turbidity and changes in nutrient availability and noise pollution. Coastal or nearshore extraction can also affect the salinization of aquifers and future tourist development. International practices and regulatory frameworks vary widely. Some countries, including Indonesia, Thailand, Malaysia, Vietnam and Cambodia have banned marine sand exports in the last 20 years, while others lack any legislation and or effective monitoring programs. A lot of solutions in hand. We have uh, a lot of um, local communities doing great things. Um, a lot of the uh, agreements that we are coming to in terms of how much of the earth we want to protect, how much uh, of our emissions we want to reduce, uh, this all just it comes down to the polit political will to act. And it's, it may not be in a politician's immediate self-interest to do so, but acting is, is the right thing to do and it needs to happen. In Lagos, and as with other cities around the world, things like what we call letting nature work. So instead of continually taking space away from nature and degrading nature for other purposes, we start to give that space back. We start to conserve ecosystems. We start to restore them so that we can uh, benefit from their ability to protect us from things like storm surge and flooding. This can go hand in hand with things like consuming sustainably. So we talked about sand mining, trying to find alternative materials, but also uh, things like I mentioned the drainage system. Consuming sustainably means less garbage, being more aware of how to manage waste. And this is uh, something that um, hinders the drainage systems in Lagos, but even somewhere like New York that struggled recently during Hurricane Ida when they received more rain than the city could handle their aging sewer system it also faces problems from people just throwing things, flushing things down the toilet and clogging things up. So um, it, it comes to the level of every person can contribute to some of these solutions. It's, uh, it's not um, lost on me that people uh, perhaps in the UN are saying to somebody um, looking to feed their family, hey, you need to stop doing this. Um, because we made a decision um, somewhere in, in Europe. That's, of course, not the case. And I think that solution to, to say, hey, stop sand mining, that's not going to work. Any solution that we come up with needs to be done with the local communities, needs to be decided with the local communities before it's implemented. Um, there was a, something said in a recent uh, disaster risk platform in Bali, nothing about us without us. And I think we need to keep that in mind if we want any of our solutions to work. In its 2022 Sand and Sustainability Report, UNEP calls for better monitoring of sand extraction and use. The report recommended to stop the sand extraction on the beaches and active beach near shore sand system for the purpose of mining sand as a resource and to establish an international standard on sand extraction in the marine environment. Despot sand being the most used solid mineral, 50 billion tons per year in all. Global attention about the sheer scale and impact of its extraction remains limited. Sand in the natural environment supports fisheries, biodiversity, protects against coastal erosion, as well as salinization of aquifers, and serves as a natural filtration of water. Until now, we may have considered it as a common material, but we are now told it is time to reassess and recognize sand as a strategic material. And with that, we end today's show. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next week.